What's up airplane collectors, welcome to a crazy model review, it's your host Ray. In today's video you guys are going to watch me emotionally suffer while I try to review four model airplanes in one video. In today's video I'll be reviewing the NG model set of Iceland Air Boeing 737 MAX 9s. These were released in early 2023, all in the same release, much to the dismay of mine and many other collectors' wallets. In this video we've got four of the MAX 9s, we have registrations, T, F, I, C, A, B, C, and D. So we've got the first four letters of the alphabet here, all of which have different tail colors, and all of them are amazing models. Uh, please bear with me, this is going to be a pretty hectic video, so sit back, relax, prepare for takeoff, and here we go. Starting off with the boxes, here's the box of the first model, T, F, I, C, A. Uh, it's a standard NG model 737 MAX box at 13 centimeters lengthwise and heightwise and 3.5 centimeters wide. I'll show you on the box now, so here's the front. Bottom, right side, top, left side, and the back side. Box number two has the same measurements and properties. I'll just show you around the box art. So here's the front, bottom, right side, top, left side, and the back side. Here's box number three, front, bottom, right side, top, left side, and the back side. And box number four, front, bottom, right side, top, left side, and the back side. Each one of the models includes one NG Model Collector Rewards Program card. All of them are the same faded yellow color. And here are all four of the models. Once you open up the box, you get them all four of the models fully assembled, painted, and ready to go. They're all in their individual boxes, if that wasn't obvious earlier. These are made primarily out of die-cast metal, and their dimensions are 10.5 cm for the fuselage length, 9 cm for the wingspan, and 3 cm from the ground to the top of the vertical stabilizer. Time for some fast 360s. Before I begin my review of all four of these, I'm going to give you guys some quick 360s of all of the models. So here is TFICA. Uh, I didn't even bother to try and pronounce any of the nicknames of these airplanes because I simply cannot try and do that without sounding embarrassing. Here's TFICB. The only real difference between all of these is the color on the tail. Aside from that, at a first glance, they're all pretty much identical. ICC, here's the blue one. The only one that NG missed in this release is the one with the yellow tail, which would have been really cool if they had done all five, but I think my wallet would heavily disagree with me on that one. And here's, last but not least, the most unique color out of all of these, because it's the most different. Sorry if I'm going very fast with these 360s, just I want to get this done as soon as possible. <laughs> Starting off the review at the front of the aircrafts for all of them, the nose shape on this mold is really good, as per usual. NG's 1-400 to scale 737 molds have been fantastic, especially in their nose shape, and it, it seems to show here as well. Cockpit window printing looks pretty good so far as well. It seems to align with the parts on the fuselage for all of them. And there's also a decent set of printed details up here, which I will show momentarily. So here's the side nose pro profile for TF-ICA. Uh, all of them are the same, so it really makes no difference which ones I compare. The only difference that it's going to make when I do compare uh, both of them, or not both of them, but all four of these models, is in the tail color here. So, fuselage detail looks great for all of these, uh, lots of painted and printed detail to go around. And here's the side profile for the vertical stabilizers of all four of the models. The one in the foreground right now is TFICA. Colors look pretty good up here, everything seems to align pretty well. There's ICB, I focused the camera onto that one. ICC. And last but not least, ICD. I'd like to direct some attention to TFICD because on the NG model photos posted on their Instagram, people started to get concerned with the metal paint at the front section of the vertical stabilizer because the paint didn't look really that good. It actually looked like it had been hand painted as opposed to printed or manufactured with uh, precise alignment. This isn't the case on this model, so I'm not sure how it goes around through the whole batch, but on my specific example, the paint was applied perfectly. Moving on to the wings, we're going to put the spotlight on TFICB now. Uh, wings look pretty good. There's a great selection of painted, printed, and molded detail. Painted detail in the form of the metallic paint on the leading edge slats. Printed detail in the form of the wing markings here. All of this looks pretty good. There is no issues on any of these models, so I won't be showing those. 
uh, and we have a decent selection of molded detail in the form of the control surfaces. These are a little bit harder to see due to paint filling them, but they're still recognizable, so I'll let that one slide. The bottom of the wings aren't really as detailed. The only printed detail are the aircraft's registrations on the bottom of the left wing. The split scimitar tips have been a spot of decent attention among us model collectors, and these look fabulous. The shapes are clearly defined. The edges are a little bit smooth, but I mean, or not smooth, but a little bit rounded. But this is 1 to 400 scale. It's a pretty small uh, scale, of course, and we can't expect perfection. And even then, they look rounded, but the sh shape is captured overall, and I think the shape looks pretty good nonetheless. So yeah, the split scimitar tips are pretty solid. Time for the rear section of the plane, and TF-ICC is going to be showing us this. So the rear section of the plane looks pretty good. Here you can see the horizontal stabilizers. No printed detail up here, no complaints. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty nice. The APU is sharp, as it should be, painted in the metallic gray. Uh, really solid so far. Uh, here's the bottom of the, the rear section. Looks good. You can see that there's no issues with uh, the alignments of the lines in the paint here too. This applies to all of the models, by the way. Just take my word for it, or here I'll, I'll show them. So yeah, here's the. This is TFICC. This is ICB. Uh, let me grab ICA really quick. Here is ICA, and ICD is right here. No alignment issues, everything looks really good in terms of paint alignment for all of these, so good job Tanji on that. Here is TF-ICD showing off its engines for us. So the engines on these models are pretty solid. You can see the fan blade details look gorgeous, painted a dark metallic gray, looking amazing. The engines themselves are pretty good. There's even the chevrons at the aft section of the engines here. And the exhaust nozzles look very nice and very sharp, so be careful when handling those. Obviously, you shouldn't be grabbing the model by its engines, but on the off chance that you do, you're definitely going to poke yourself doing that. There's also a lot of printed detail on the undersides of the engines, which looks fabulous. And these engines are not tilted upwards, so that's also very good to see. None of the engines are tilted upwards. There's no positioning issues either. However, earlier you may have noticed that I stuttered while talking about the wings on TFICB. That's because I noticed something wrong with its left engine. You might have been able to see it too. There appears to be some sort of flake of paint here, or metal. I can't scratch it off with my fingernail, so I'm going to assume there was definitely a production defect there. And also, or actually, okay, no, for a second I thought the exhaust nozzle wasn't aligned, but the exhaust nozzles do align, they're straight. The only issue was just this small imperfection on the engine here, which I didn't notice until now, and I've had this model for almost two months. So, uh, yeah, that kind of that kind of shows. It's a small issue, but it's definitely one that I don't like to see. Moving on to aerial details and moving back to our first model, TF-ICA. This model feature, well, all four of these models feature 3D antennas and sat domes. The antennas on the top of the aircraft are this large antenna here and a very small antenna at the rear section of the plane. These look pretty good. Uh, the antennas may be a little bit too small, actually. I'm not 100% sure, but yeah, that center antenna here looks pretty small. Uh, and of course, we do have a sat dome. Alignment seems to be pretty good, and I think it is the correct sat dome. So that looks pretty solid. On the underside of the aircraft, we've got three antennas like the usual 737NG as well. Uh, one towards the front of the aircraft and two in the rear section. These are also smaller. I'm not sure if they're supposed to be smaller in the 737 MAX family. But yeah, these are definitely smaller. So if you know better about the size, please let me know down below in the comment section. Moving on to the landing gear with TF-ICB. Landing gear looks pretty solid. All of the wheels on all of these models do roll. They're made out of rubber and they roll very smoothly. The gear is very nicely detailed, you can see the landing gear there, and the gear bays are painted a dark gray. Uh, looks like there was a paint application issue on the left side here, well on the right side relative to your or no, that is uh, that is both the left side of the aircraft and the left side of your screen. Jeez, I keep getting my left and right confused. But yeah, there is a bit of a paint smudge there. Not the end of the world, but there is a paint smudge. And of course here's the nose gear. Nose gear is, I think it's a little bit taller because it, it's the 737 MAX family. It does appear to kind of be bent a little bit backwards. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be like that either. But aside from that, gears look pretty good, details on them looks good, and of course the wheels roll, that's always a welcome feature. More issues with the landing gear. I just noticed on TF-ICA, the main landing gear are bent forwards, and that's not supposed to be right. And there is also a slight alignment discrepancy with both of them. You can see it uh, right here, I think. Yeah, you can see that one gear is a little bit more bent forward than the other, that left one 
uh, well, the one to the right on your screen, but on the left of the aircraft, that is bent forward, and it shouldn't be. It's more bent forward than the other one, so that also is a bit of an alignment issue. Here's the front section of TFICA, and we're going to talk about wing flex gear balance and engine clearance over here and cockpit window printing. So cockpit window printing looks pretty symmetrical. Gear balance looks good. Wing flex looks good as per usual. Everything seems to align here. Really well done. All right, so now we're going to pull a little bit of a conveyor belt move right here. Here's TFICB. TFICB looks pretty good. Wing flex might be a tad bit higher, but still within acceptable margins, so that looks good. It's TF ICC. Oh, we might have our first issue with a uh, gear balance here. Either that or the box is a little bit off. Uh, yeah, it looks like uh, there might be a little discrepancy in gear balance in the form of, uh, looks like one side is a little bit higher than the other. But aside from that, everything else looks decent. I think that's also the box that it's sitting on. So let's try and align one more time. All right, no, this disregard that it looks, I think it looks fine. And last but not least, TF ICD, let me look at the camera really quick. Looks pretty solid as well. And long last, my crazy, hectic, and probably lower quality than usual review is finally done. Oh my god, my brain cells are going to need to recover from this one. Now time for my personal opinion and recommendation. So, I'm pretty sure you guys got the impression that these models are solid. There are a few imperfections here and there, like I did point out with the small imperfections with the paint application in the gear bay and that one issue with the engine. But aside from that, they're really solid. NG did a really good job with their 737 MAX molds. These are, this is my first time owning a NG model 737 MAX 9, and they left a very good impression with me. So, do I recommend these models? Yes, I do. You might get some small quality control issues, but still, nonetheless, these are beautiful aircraft. Those are very those quality control issues are very hard to see in the first place. And yeah, I definitely recommend them. Well, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, sorry about the lower quality of this video. I did four in one. That's definitely uh, way more than what I'm used to doing because I only do one in one video. And that's all I've got for you guys today. Stay tuned for more aerospace content this week. I'll try my best to get as, as many videos out as possible. And that's all I've got for you guys today. Like, comment, and subscribe. See you later.